My name is Larry Beldock, and uh, when I got out, I was an EO3 and uh, NMCB5 to report to Port Wayne, California, to uh, Equipment Operator A School. And uh, so uh, I went home for the 15 days, enjoyed that. I was real proud, all dressed up <coughs> in my Navy uniform and stuff. And uh, went out to Port Wayne, Amy. And never been to California in my life, so that was interesting. Um, a school, we started A school. Uh, uh, we were um, we get picked up in the morning out on the grinder out there in a cattle car pulled by a track, you know, semi tractor, actual cattle car. But they put benches in it, seats, and uh, everybody piling this cattle car. And when the same guy drove the, the truck every day, you know, I mean, he'd been been in for a while. He'd haul us out to uh, where we, the compound where we went to school at, uh, or the Quonset Hut, as it's called. And uh, we'd do our classes every day. We studied uh, this piece of equipment and that piece of equipment. And we'd go out and operate it for a week or so, you know. Uh, after A school, I was, uh, assigned to uh, an MCB-5, and uh, I think it was in September when I got uh, stationed to uh, MCB-5. Um, they were going to deploy in December, and I'm trying to remember, I think they were going to Puerto Rico, but I'm not sure. Anyway, they had details, detachments, and uh, Pretty much everybody that I went to A school with uh, was sent to five, uh, the majority. Well, all us being new, they had a detachment going to Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean, which is a, a small island uh, owned by the British, but being developed uh, as a, uh, a uh, intelligence uh, center and a eventually going to be a refueling uh, stop for ships uh, and uh, our job was to go to was the train before we left we had to train we were going to go do uh, uh, a, a runway extension and a parking apron well we we were billed to do the, the uh, runway extension uh, I mean I'll get into the parking apron in a little bit but uh, so we us being the new guys, we were volunteered to Diego Garcia. Nobody really cared to go there because it's in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, um, and most of them guys had already been there once, that were already in the battalion. So that was my first deployment. And uh, we got uh, ready to go there. It was right, uh, I think it was just after Christmas. Then. So on the way over, we it was a, a long flight, I believe the, the complete flight was about 18 hours. But we uh, left, uh, we rode buses to San Francisco uh, and got on a plane there and we flew to uh, Anchorage, Alaska and stopped there and refueled uh, there, I don't know, a couple hours. Then we went on to Yokota, Japan, we were there to refuel uh, a couple hours. And then we flew to uh, Clark Air Force Base in the uh, Philippines. And we spent four days there before we went on to Diego Garcia. And uh, we got over to, to Diego Garcia. They, they told us about the, the weather there, quite warm, quite sunny. They said if you've had suntans in the past, yeah, they didn't compare to the suntan you'll get there. And they weren't lying, because most of us had a suntan when we went there, and we still burned. And, uh, but uh, anyway, we got started right away working. Uh, they moved us in. Uh, now, this is all new stuff, never seen, of course, in my life, right? I mean, I haven't been anywhere. So this is, this is the one that sticks in my mind. This is what we lived in. Uh, when we got there, we had... Plywood hooches, they were called hooches, and uh, 
we would have about a dozen guys in one, and inside they were petitioned off with about four guys in a petition. Quite comfortable, uh, all screened in, no air conditioning. We did have some fans, and uh, so anyway, we dug in. We started working on the uh, the runway extension. We had a batch plant, and uh, uh, here's a picture of the batch plant. We had a batch plant. We had a paver. We hauled uh, we hauled concrete about a mile from the. To the batch plant to the uh, runway in a five yard dump truck and uh, uh, I worked on we, well we all rotated around so everybody got a chance to do a little bit of everything while they were there worked on the batch plant uh, worked with some of the uh, the paving crew uh, behind the paver and uh, Expansion joint saws, uh, drove the dump trucks, run the run the rubber tire loaders, and uh, uh, let's see what else we have here. Well, here's a picture of uh, well, that's part of the parking heap. Let's see. Well, here's one with uh, with one of these dump trucks here. They were talking about the old uh, style stuff that was that was a uh, one of them back then. But, uh, and here's here's a shot we got. One day we uh, we we weren't without our problems. Let me see here. We lost power a couple of times on a batch plant, and uh, each time we lost power. And this is where. People talk about the can-do spirit of the Seabees. We lost power to the batch plant, and the drum up here was full of concrete. So you see all these guys? We all shovel that concrete out of there before it set up. That happened a couple of times. And uh, that was impressive. Everybody jumps right in and takes care of the problem. The runway, sometimes while we were there during the rainy season and those we had a lot of bad days during the rainy season, we sometimes we'd lose concrete. Uh, we'd have to form it up and uh, cover it up, try not to lose the concrete. Uh, some days it would decide to rain so so hard that uh, we would wash it away. and. Uh, We we worked uh, we worked that job for um, nine months, uh, and we didn't find out until afterwards. We did the runway extension, and like I said earlier about the parking apron, that was supposed to be another job for another detachment, and we finished uh, the runway and the parking apron extension in nine months. And uh, like I said, we didn't none of us knew that uh, until after afterwards that. Uh, we weren't there to do that part of the job, but we we finished things up uh, in time or ahead of schedule, and they uh, they decided to let us go ahead and do that too. Um, there's a here's a picture of a, well, there's a little bit of a, a water tanker in a way there, but uh, that's the paver. And. Uh, and as a kid being about 18, 19 years old, to, to, to get involved, be able to be involved with a, with a project like that was, to, as I think back now, was pretty, pretty astonishing. Uh, we just, we trained for it. They, they, they taught us this paving stuff before we went on the, uh, on the deployment. And when we got there, we, we hit the ground running. And, and, uh, got the job done. That stuck in my, that's always stuck in my mind because that was, that was so uh, expi uh, inspiring to me at the time. Uh, 
so far from home. All these guys I've, I've known for, well, by the time we were done, probably about a year. But just about every one of them guys uh, that I knew right up front there, I was with the whole time I was in. That was, uh, we, I'd been other places after that, but this one was the, my favorite. And I enjoyed the whole time. And, and uh, the Seabees, I don't think there's another uh, outfit in any of the military, uh, being it, uh, even the rest of the Navy, the Army, uh, Marines, Air Force, has anything that comes close to the Seabees as far as the organization, the camaraderie, and uh, uh, the skills that go into everything that's done in the Seabees. These guys are all professionals. They take it serious and they have fun with while they're doing it. And we always look forward to uh, going on deployment, and we always were getting looked forward to coming home when it was getting time. Uh, we were happy both ways. Not very many guys were sad. Everybody enjoyed it.